everybody, Madam President, fellow members. We all use email all throughout the day, whether it is for business, personal use, work, or for school. Specifically, when relating to work email, professionalism is important and key. For my second speech, I'd like to present a scenario and provide two perspectives on it, and in the end, present the right usage for a common grammatical error. So, to say you've received an email from a higher up or a manager, and this email you've been asked to create an account for a new customer. And by doing so, you've been asked to create a list of items that you'll have to request for a customer. So you compose your email, you start off by saying, good afternoon, I would like to set up an account for a new customer. The list of items I request are as followed. The first item you list is pink, sand, or pink snapper, uh, filet. You request specifically raw and specifically wild caught. And you want to, it to be wild caught because you want to come off to the customer as eco-friendly and environmentally conscious in the fact that you're not farming your species. The second item that you would like is a half a gallon of Pacific oysters. And specifically for these oysters, you want them to be dry and not wet because your understanding is that wet oysters shrink once they're cooked and you don't want any kind of surprises once you've cooked the items to present to the customer as far as being on the plate coverage and not having enough space. The third item that you request, you want a shrimp item. And specifically, you're looking for a bigger size shrimp. So when you're asking for this item, you request a U12 shrimp, which specifically means under 12. And you know from your understanding that it's a count per pound. And you know the lower number rep represents a bigger size shrimp to account for the weight difference. So you've listed out your items. And by the way, the extensive seafood knowledge comes from the department that I work in. So that kind of explains all of that. <laughs> so you've listed your items out. And you say, thank you for your time and convenience. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. So you sign your name and you send your email off. Now to most, this email sounds pretty sound and complete. You've stated your problem, you've stated your solution, you've listed out your items that you've request, you've shown gratitude in advance by thanking them for their time, and you've sent your email. So now, if you'll allow me, I'd like to present that same scenario but manipulate one of the sen one sentence and then contrast between the two. So, we'll say you've received that email from that manager hired up asking you to set up a new account. So you compose the first email saying, good afternoon, Dave, I would like to set up an account for a new customer. The list of items I request are as follows. One pink snapper, and you want it raw, filet, and wild caught, specifically wild caught, because you want to come off as sustainable in your fishing practices. And the second item you request are the Pacific oysters, and specifically you would like a half a gallon of dry oysters because you understand that wet oysters are going to shrink once they're cooked. And the last item that you request is a shrimp item. You specifically want a black tiger prawn that's U12, and specifically that U12 number, because if it's a higher number, you're going to understand that that higher count from, like, say, 50 to 60 is going to represent a smaller size shrimp. And you don't want any small shrimp. You want the bigger, the biggest size shrimp you can get for this plate. You say, thank you for your time and convenience. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You sign your name at the bottom, and you send your email off. Now, the subtle difference between those two scenarios from which I presented immediately precedes the list of items from which you've requested. And that sentence reads, the list of items I request are as followed, versus the list of items I request are as follows. So the correct usage in this example would be the list of items I request are as follows. And it's as follows as opposed to as followed, because as followed represents past tense. And since the list of items you requested immediately follows the sentence, you would use the present tense form as saying the list of items I request are as follows. And more specifically, you probably wouldn't want to refer to seafood in the past tense, or you could end up in a kerfuffle or <laughs> any other potential customer. So definitely want to remain in the present tense when referring to a list that's after your sentence. So I myself have used both from school to work up until now and far in between. 
And really, I felt that this would be a good example and topic to present to you all because I feel that while we all don't use lists in our emails on a daily basis, we do all use email on a daily basis. And hopefully, through my speech, you all will be able, the next time you may have to list items in an email, that you can confidently send that email next time, knowing that you've chosen the correct tense and won't have to think back, did I use the right word or did I use the right grammar? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.